Welcome back to the KNX IoT Summit. Thank you for joining us. We're going to have an exciting presentation here on the first KNX IoT device. We'd like to welcome from Schneider, Mikhail Bliznak, who is the Wiser KNX Cloud Architect. Michael, welcome. Hello. And Peter Mares, who is the product owner. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us to talk about the KNX IoT device. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Let me invite you on today's presentation, which is all about the KNX IoT third party API for Wiser for KNX and SpaceX logic controllers from Schneider Electric. Okay, so let's first talk about the uh, Visor 4 KNX Space Technology Controllers, our offer. Then we go through the controllers overview and comparison because both controllers are different and target different uh, segment. Then uh, I will pass forward to uh, my colleague who will introduce you the KNX IoT third-party API, how we integrate with third-party services, uh, what's the API journey, so basically what you need to install and uh, configure to make uh, IoT operable on these two controllers. Uh, then we will uh, introduce you, explain how we cooperate with the SimLab uh, company, which use this third-party API with our controllers. And uh, later something from uh, our internal cook, which is the Alexa voice control and Google Home assistant integration with our uh, controllers. So Visa 4 KNX, it targets residential segment. It's a logic controller and a perfect choice for single or multi houses or residential complexes and integrates wide range of control functions to improve comfort, security and flexibility for residents and for homeowners. It's a multi protocol gateway with web server running on this hardware and has a powerful logic engine done by Lua Scripting or Graphical. The system is future-proof, interoperable, and scalable. With its integrated customizable visualization, the installation of energy consumption can be displayed and monitored through PCs, smartphones, or any mobile devices. Spacelink targets a commercial segment. It allows the creation of complex building automation solutions the full control, including uh, light and room control on KNX, metering technologies. It's a multi-protocol gateway, uh, also with a web server, and has a powerful logic engine, uh, same as Visor for KNX, Lua scripting graphical one. It's not limited, uh, and it's a, a BTL certified backnet gateway uh, as a server uh, with up to uh, 2000 backnet uh, data objects, data points, and full Modbus line, which is 31 uh, devices. It enables the easy and effortless integration into building management systems like EcoStructure by Schneider Electric or any other third-party BMS. Here you can see the comparison between uh, these two controllers, as we uh, already said, targets different segments. Therefore, uh, we have on the left side the space thing, which is uh, practically not limited logic controllers for uh, big building installations. On the right side, we have the Visor 4 KNX, which is uh, used to uh, be uh, installed in uh, residential projects, houses. Therefore, it's not necessary to have uh, uh, unlimited functionalities in there. Both of these Controllers can run the uh, KNX third-party IoT uh, API, so it can be used fully with um, the integration in KNX IoT world. Now, let me uh, give a word to my colleague, Michal Dizniak, who will introduce you the KNX IoT third-party API as a cloud architect. Okay, thanks. Peter for the introduction. And now let's move uh, to the software part of our solution. Uh, thanks for the introduction of the hardware we used for running the software. And now let's focus on the things which we could do with the hardware you just described. The goal of this presentation is to introduce new 
API, which could be used uh, for controlling your KNX installation. The API is called KNX IoT Third Party API, and it has been specified by KNX.org in cooperation with many KNX manufacturers, including the Schneider Electric. Right now, we are closing the second voting cycle uh, for the API, which means basically that the API is not frozen, it's still evolving, and we plan to introduce the new versions in the future as well. Basically, the main target for the API is to build a bridge between KNX world and the other outside Internet of Things world based mainly on IP technologies. Basically, the target is to hide all the complexity of the KNX the analysis of the KNX installation and to allow users which are used to use some IP-based uh, APIs and technologies to integrate with the KNX. Uh, the KNX third-party API is based on HTTP REST calls or WebSockets you could use to interact with the KNX, with the KNX installation. The KNX third-party API itself can run both on local network in local environment and also in the cloud. Therefore, you can use it, control the KNX devices from some restricted on-premise local network, but, or you can use it to access your device, your KNX devices also over internet. Okay. What the KNX.org does is that it provides interested third parties with the specification of the API. Then, the KNX device manufacturers or KNX solution providers must implement the, uh, the API themselves and offer it to their customers, which is basically what we did uh, in Schneider Electric. Here, we implemented the API on both Visor for KNX device and Spanslick devices, and also in Schneider Electric uh, Visor for KNX cloud. Thanks to that, you can use the API to control your KNX devices from local network and also via internet. Thanks to the API and thanks to the implementation we did, we were able to integrate some well-known and established voice control solutions like Amazon Alexa, Google Actions, Google Home uh, with uh, the KNX system which basically means that uh, you can control your KNX and devices by voice commands. Also, we did a successful cooperation with a Simlab company, uh, which built some unique 3D environment, which can visualize various offices, residential houses, and so on, and which also allows the customers to control the devices in some interactive 3D way. Uh, of course, the already done in uh, integrations are, now, are not the only one planned. We plan also some new features which will be added to our solution in the future, like we would like to integrate IFTTT and similar stuff. Here, I'd like to describe a little bit of the journey uh, which must be taken to leverage all the features which are provided uh, by the KNX IoT third party API. Basically, at the very beginning, the KNX installation itself must be defined and must be done somehow. You can use, or the system integrator can use either eConfigure KNX tool or he can use plain ETS project, uh, which could be, which should be used to, to definition of the KNX installation itself and the hierarchy of their components like buildings, houses, floors, uh, devices located in these sites and so on. Then, if someone wants to use the KNX IoT third party API on the Visor for KNX device or Spacelink device, he must install some dedicated applications from digital, digital marketplace, which is uh, part of the Visor for KNX or Spacelink device. These applications include Cloud Connector, which is application uh, providing connectivity to Visor KNX Cloud. Also, KNX IoT third party API application, which is basically the main point of the inter, inter uh, solution, providing the basic functionality. And he must also install visualization application called TouchFree, which can be itself used 
for specification of some visual representation of the KNX uh, installation. And it is also the main entry point for the configuration of the KNX IoT Surfati API. If all this is already done and prepared, then the interested party can start to interact with the KNX IoT Surfati API. If the main goal or the only goal is to use the local network, then it's basically all what must be done. Starting, starting from this, uh, all the API routes, which are of course uh, documented, uh, could be called via standard HTTP REST-based clients, uh, either some general one, generally available ones, or uh, by using some client custom application. If the goal is to control the Kenic installation via internet, over the internet, then some additional steps must be done. First of all, the client application, which will be using the KNX third party API, must obtain some credentials, client ID and client secrets, which will identify the application. And thanks to this, the application could get access token to the API routes, which are exposed from Visor KNX Cloud, and the client application can interact with the KNX, uh, KNX installation devices on behalf of the locked in users. Of course, the API itself is targeted not to end customers, but to providers of client applications, which will be offered to end customers. Therefore, the end customer will be allowed to interact with the KNX installation through the client application provided by some third-party client. And now here are the examples of uh, the successful integrations we did in the last few months. Now what we are showing is uh, some on 3D visualization provided by SimLab company, which uh, can be used uh, to visualize, to maintain, and to control not only, but also KNX installation uh, from within 3D environment shown in a standard web browser. As you can see here, the re office, real office, could be amended with some interactive live uh, control points, which basically are linked to real KNX devices. And by walking through the office and by playing with the virtual controls which are put on the walls, you can interact with the real application, with the real installation. You can switch on switch off lights, sockets, you can watch the current temperature, and basically you can interact with all the devices which are available on the KNX, on the KNX installation. Also, thanks to the third party API, we were able to successfully integrate with uh, one of main voice control providers available like Alexa, Amazon Alexa and Google Actions. So here you can see uh, the example of uh, native Alexa, Amazon uh, voice control application, uh, which you can use uh, not only to give some voice commands, to your KNX installation, but also you can use its uh, widget-based user interface to uh, work with your KNX devices. And the same you can do also with the Google Actions, which will be shown in the, pre in the next slide, like this. So you can use also Google devices, either the voice control oriented or the uh, mobile application, Google Home, mobile application to work with the KNX installation as well. And that's basically it. Gentlemen, thank you very much for that great presentation. It was extremely interesting. And actually, we're looking forward to in our next presentation to get uh, a, a, a little demo of the uh, Simon uh, software solution. So that'll be uh, uh, you know, that'll tie in very well. I, I have only a couple questions to, to put to you, but first, you know, I, I wanted to just underline, you have the Wiser 
KNX, which is the logic controller for residential and the space links for the commercial so that you're, you're in both, you know, the smart home and the building automation side. And um, I wanted to ask regarding the point about having local control versus having uh, the internet access. I, I think that to me sounds like a, an attractive feature, you know, but you know, how do you guys feel? What importance do you give that? Okay. I think that the, the most important part here or the main feature is that uh, thanks to the ability to control device or local, local network, you can use the solution also in some restricted environment. For example, like in hotels, like in a basically environment which uh, doesn't offer to full access to the internet, which of course uh, is uh, nowadays, it can happen easily, <laughs> of course, but also uh, thanks to the possibility to control the devices over internet, we don't restrict the user uh, to interact with the Kenix uh, installation just only via the local network, but also we allow them to control their houses uh, remotely through the internet, from remote locations, from holidays, from their work, from whatever. Okay. I can just complement that those uh, two functions are equal. Yeah, local yeah. access or internet access. Yeah, it's it's a I think a good point for users to understand. And that I, I have another question regarding you you sh you showed a chart for the KNX IoT third party API journey, and frankly, you know, given the history of building and smart home automation, it looked pretty easy. Now, is it as easy as it looks to to take that journey? How hard is it? How hard is to build your application based yeah. on the API? Yeah. Uh, actually, and actually, it's, 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 not, it's not to hard. What we've seen in the past. You know, yeah. it's, it? it's not hard. It's not hard. Yeah. If, if there's someone, some interested third party, uh, which have some uh, experience uh, from building applications, uh, consuming some REST-based APIs, that's basically it. It's not, nothing nothing uh, more complex. So uh, what must be done is, that of course, the application must uh, allow uh, the users to log in the system, to pair their user accounts with the controllers, and that, that's it. Yeah, because uh, the application just calls some exposed API routes, which can give you uh, the, all the information which is needed, like all the information about the locations of your Canix installations, like sites, buildings, floors, rooms. Then it can give you information about uh, functions, Canix functions, which are, for example, some switches, lights, and so on. And it allows you to read the data and to write the data. So you can get information about uh, current temperature in your room, or you can switch off or switch on the bulb in your room, and that's it. All right, and and then a, a final question addressed more towards Peter. But you know, again, a, as the um, product owner, you know, how do you feel about this facility now being on your products? You know, do you do you think that this is something that you know? is uh, attractive and helpful definitely this is a great opportunity how we can evolve the product uh, uh, and, and we constantly evolving the product uh, adding the, the new um, <clears throat> possibilities to connect to the cloud uh, cloud connectivity is a basic uh, feature uh, we implemented and now this is just a step forward to bring uh, more to customers so uh, they can just take the controller and build on this controller their own solution and offer to their customers. So it's uh, definitely really great technology. Uh, we, we implemented uh, recently to the to the controller. Thank you, Peter. I'm glad I wasn't the only one excited because it, it seemed <laughs> to me to be a very cool thing to have. Uh, thank you, gentlemen from Schneider. Thank you very much for joining us today.